So, Unicorn Warriors Eternal. I was not planning at all to make a video on this. I had seen the ads for it as I had been watching Adult Swim, and I decided to get into it before they aired the third episode, which was last night. Today's the 12th, it aired on the 11th. And, oh my gosh, this show, so far, knock on wood, is spectacular. It's just a mini-series. It's not... It, as far as I can tell, it's not a uh, full-length series as far as runtime is concerned. It's about 21 minutes. Okay. So I guess it is a full series, but it's... I'm seeing stuff where it says it's a mini-series, but I'll give you, just for the sake of convenience, I'll give you the, the Wikipedia premise. In Unicorn Warriors Eternal, an evil force is looming across the dark, thick-aired streets of Industrial Revolution London when a group of heroes dubbed Unicorn are accidentally reawakened in the bodies of teenagers instead of adult hosts they've embodied in the past. Melinda, a powerful sorceress, Sang, a cosmic monk, and Edred, a warrior elf. With distorted memories and their magical abilities weakened and fragmented, the trio must work together with the help from their steam-powered robot Copernicus to unravel the mysteries of their pasts and present that will reveal their path to defeating a timeless threat. Now, that's a pretty loaded description, but yeah, it's basically he these heroes get reincarnated who are destined to eternally fight this sort of cosmic evil, and they end up being reawakened in largely teenagers and having to reconnect their memories and it's kind of a slow drip in the beginning there's only three episodes so we're just really starting to see the concept come to fruition but let me tell you the visual flair of this show the action in this show it's Gendy Tarkovsky at his best it is at his absolute best this is this is like when Samurai Jack premiered. This is about that level, if not better. Apparently, it took him almost 20 years to get this greenlit. For some reason, they just kept passing it up, which which really reinforces the opinion that television executives are kind of dumb. I mean, this thing is spectacular. I, I looked at the previews and I was like, this looks visually, because I knew it was Gendy Tartakovsky, this looks visually interesting, so maybe I'll tune in, but I, I don't really know. But I decided to tune in finally. I caught up with the first two episodes, was blown away. And then the third episode, I was blown away. This is pure entertainment. This doesn't feel ideological. It doesn't feel woke. It just feels fun. And again, knock on wood, hopefully it stays that way for the duration of the season. Once the full season is out, I want to do a full recap of it or sort of a full review from start to finish. But as of right now, it's great. It, it has solid storytelling, it has intrigue. It's a bit on the predictable side, if I'm honest. But, to be fair, I don't mind. It, I just genuinely don't mind. I like most of the characters. Uh, the villains are somewhat still shrouded in mystery. That's kind of at the, the point that we're at. But, they're becoming, each episode, they're subsequently becoming more and more revealed. Um, each, each of the characters, um, they spend a lot of time on Melinda because she ends up inhabiting the body of a teenager of a I believe it's a teenager getting married although it, they haven't said whether it's a teenager whether she's a teenager or a young adult and she's very reluctant to accept that fact so they spend I think the first two or three episodes focusing primarily on her and then saying a cosmic monk he ends up inhabiting the body of a of a like an orphan black teenage boy and I actually feel bad for that one because his abilities have it to where he he's in this other realm and he can only see within this other realm and interact with this other realm but he's also in the in the physical world as well but he it, it's like he can't see in the physical world or I, I they haven't really explained it that much yet but it's almost as if he can't see beyond this this ethereal plane that he's trapped in and it's it's really like, I would hate that. I would absolutely hate that. I'd be like, no, give me any other ability than this. If I can go in and out of this realm at will, that's fine. Use it for what I need to use it for. But I don't want to be to where I can only physically see that. Like, his eyes are glazed over. You can see, like, the, the starry realm that he's inhabiting. And I guess he's got some sort of inner peace about it. But I would be going nuts. And then, there's not much to say about Edred, the warrior elf. He's just kind of generic. And uh, But Copernicus, the robot, he's awesome. 
He's got a really awesome introduction, a really awesome fight scene in a cemetery that's actually previewed in one of the uh, in one of the promos. That's actually what got me interested in it. He ends up being surrounded and has this multi-directional cannon that he shoots off to the other to, at the other robots. It's just it's so cool, and you've got this steampunk aesthetic, which is totally fictional. It's a totally fictional setting, so you've got you know characters that may not make sense for historical purposes, but I mean, this is entirely fictional, so it, it just works. It's not woke. As far as I can tell, it's not woke. It's not identity politics driven. It's just there to tell a compelling story, and it, it does the anime thing where it drip feeds you along and gets you invested in what the next episode's going to be. Like, I remember audibly last night going, that's where it ends? I haven't done that for a show in years, for a new show in years, and this it's so exciting it's such an exciting series, and I really hope that it sticks to what it's doing and doesn't veer off into woke nonsense or identity politics or anything that would really ruin it. This is traditional storytelling, traditional action, dealing with, you know, dealing with being forced to become a hero. It's the, it's the reluctant hero story that's been told a dozen times, but it's still... It's still done very compelling, and the, the I can't get over the visuals, man. The visuals are just so stinking good. This is the type of animation that we need to be producing more in the West. This is a this is on par with a lot of anime that I've seen. We need to be making more shows like this, and Gendy Tartakovsky is the man to lead that charge, one hundred percent. I I can't figure out for the life of me why networks passed up on this show for so long, but I mean. It was absolutely a mistake. I mean, it said that Tartakovsky pitched it to various studios with little to no success. Eventually, it was picked up by Cartoon Network and HBO Max. So it's going to be on both Adult Swim and HBO Max. I've been watching it on Adult Swim because I love linear television. I love the bumpers on Adult Swim. You don't get that on HBO. As far as I know, you don't. Um, I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's just... It's spectacular. There's not much more I can say about it because it's only three episodes in. I don't, I don't know when the next episode is going to premiere. May twelfth. Oh, it's actually going to premiere tonight. Sweet. Twelfth, and then from there, there's going to be the nineteenth. Oh no, wait. It already did premiere. Okay, so that's what I watched last night. So the next one is going to be the nineteenth. So it's going to be two days before my birthday. That's going to be... When is the 19th? Is it going to be another Thursday? Yes, it's going to be next Thursday. Okay. And then the 26th. So it's going to be each each Thursday night at midnight. So, I mean, this, this show is amazing. Now, if you've got Max, it's going to be called Max, but if you've got HBO Max, you'll be able to watch it whenever it launches on there. But if you're watching, like me, Linear on Adult Swim... I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting to actually tune into TV for a new show for a change. It's been years for me, especially for an animated series. You know, I sort of did it for Rick and Morty, but I wasn't interested enough, and I just, you know, found it on the internet. But this is exciting. This is really exciting. This is hats off to Gendy Tartakovsky, because so far I've, I'm blown away by this. I was not expecting... I, I knew from the looks of it they were going for something anime-like, and I wasn't sure if that would land or not, but it absolutely has. And it looks like there's uh, four episodes left before uh, before the series, the season is over. So hopefully, if this thing is successful, it gets another season. Because my gosh, oh, that, that is... It's a master class. It's an absolute master class of action animation. There hasn't been something this good in years. There really hasn't. So that's all I've got to say about this. I know it wasn't in depth. I know I repeated myself over and over again, but you'll have to bear with me because this this thing is in its infancy right now. I'll have to give you a full recap once the series is done. So I'm going to possibly label this a first impressions and just kind of write it off as a first impressions. My first impressions, you should absolutely watch it 100%. So thank you very much for watching this special edition of Toonie Talk. This has been Super Koopa TV, and I will see you guys next time. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.